behavior modification entails the application of learning principles. Many psychologists and others have paved the way for our understanding of those principles. Here they are, <laughs> some of those trailblazers. Thorndike, Pavlov, Watson, Mary Cover Jones, Skinner, Bandura, and Lovas. Thorndike, more than a century ago, he didn't formulate the principle, the law of effect, meaning that behavior is a function of its consequences. For example, a behavior that is reinforced is more likely to be repeated than one that is punished. Pavlov discovered classical conditioning. That is uh, a neutral stimulus, one that has no effect on our behavior, can become a conditioned stimulus capable of eliciting a conditioned response. For example, a dog can learn to salivate to finger snapping that has been repeatedly paired with, say, meat powder. Watson expanded Pavlov work and showed that classical conditioning could be used to establish a fear response in an infant named Peter. Mary Cover Jones apply counter conditioning to help uh, a toddler named Peter basically uh, get rid of his fear of rabbits. Skinner, perhaps the most celebrated, maybe one of the most influential psychologists of the 21st, 28th century, excuse me, posited that behavior, it's a function of its consequence, just like uh, Thorndike. Active behavior can be influenced by their consequences. Bandura showed that observational learning is very powerful, that we can learn by simply observing other people. For example, the Bobodel experiment in which children basically imitated the behavior of a model. And finally, Lovas provided a framework for the treatment of uh, children with autism. Now, what are some of the basic learning principles? Reinforcement, punishment, and extinction. What is reinforcement? Well, reinforcement can be positive or negative. The term describes any consequence that increases the behavior, the future behavior, the probability that it will occur. By the way, contrary to popular understanding, negative reinforcement is not punishment. Now, punishment also can be positive or negative and refers to any consequence that decreases the future probability of a behavior. As for extinction, it simply denotes the gradual decrease of a behavior that is no longer reinforced. In 1948, Skinner, the founder of the experimental science of behavior, published a novel, Walden II, in which he described an ideal utopian society consisting of about 1,000 members. The society, the community, basically encourages its member to view every habit and custom with an eye to possible improvement. Today, thanks to the contribution of many, there is a very vibrant and applied science of behavior. I am not here to promote the utopian society. 
au contraire. But lately, I have wondered whether the application of behavior modification can foster, can promote a more sustainable world. Let us consider two examples of human behavior that can be problematic. Texting while driving, TWD. <laughs> Texting is a wonderful thing. It's a good tool. Connects people, but the abuse of such technology can be maladaptive. Why on earth would anybody want to text and drive at the same time? <laughs> Let's look at what keeps this texting frenzy going. Reinforcement, my friends. Reinforcement and instant gratification. You see, we reinforce each other's behavior when we instantly respond to those text messages, no matter how insignificant and trivial they are. Yeah, yeah, baby, <laughs> what are you doing? LOL, <laughs> yo, yo, YYSSW. But, you know, the rate of those text messages could decrease considerably if we would do what? Place them on extinction, remember? Extinction is the gradual decrease of a behavior that is no longer reinforced. But this texting frenzy, if this thing goes on, you know what will happen to future generation? We'll develop very supersized thumbs <laughs> and maybe carpal tunnel syndrome. And guess what, guy? It will interfere with our capacity to do more productive work. Another concern with this interest for brevity, we in word like LOL, what will become of our language? <laughs> LOL, I understand it means laughing out loud or lots of love. Which one? <laughs> yo, yo, you're on your own. Why, why, S, S, W, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, whatever. <laughs> Is this what we want to really do? But more significantly, driving, texting while driving, it's analogous to driving blindfolded for about 4.6 seconds, according to some studies. Any punishment for this thing? This thing is illegal, it's most state, but not all. In some states, it's only for what? New drivers. And you know what the, what's the fine, the beginning fine in most states? $20 for first offenders. $20! I am thinking a string of two letter words. Jail time, beyond bar, electric chair. I'm just kidding about the electric chair. That seriously, guy, if behavior is a function of its consequences, we need to impose more severe consequences for people exhibiting erratic behavior, maladaptive, totally unacceptable behavior, as determined for texting while driving. Now, a more serious concern, and one, one that poses a threat to humanity and its survival, is global warming. Human production of carbon dioxide as a result of fossil fuel burning has contributed partly to the problem. And the consequences, you could see the consequences. Ice melting at the Earth Pole, global sea levels rising, hotter and drier weather, just to name a few. So if behavior it's a function of its consequences. Why can't we actively reduce CO2 emission? Well, I could think of two reasons. Reason number one, the change that we're seeing, they're occurring gradually. 
incrementally. There is no tipping point. There is no imminent threat. The second reason is that the status quo, it's very lucrative for some companies. They're primarily concerned with what? The profit margin. What do we do? Well, we could do a lot of different things. We could, for example, provide more incentive to car manufacturers that can produce more low emission vehicle. Or we could explore alternative energy sources. We could also provide incentive to consumer, reinforces in terms of low pricing so they can buy eco-friendly vehicle. And for some of us, if we actually work near, live near a place of employment, look at this guy, bike to work. Maybe some people might think that this is cool and observational learning, they will start doing the same thing. You see guys, it's the little thing that we can do in unison for a common purpose, but can change the way we do things. Because if we don't, guess what? We will slowly and gradually destroy the earth. Clearly, our behavior can result in positive and negative consequences. What we do and how other people react to what we do matter. Ultimately, our action will determine the kind of world we're going to leave behind. The world for our children that and grandchildren will inherit.